afternoon. Police are searching an area around Chippenham in the hunt for a man who's been missing for three days. Tom Edwards was due to catch a bus home to Carl after being at a bar in Swindon last Friday. Signals from his mobile phone have since been traced to Chippenham. His family say his disappearance is completely out of character. This is, no, this is not like him at all. He's so, that sofa next door is where he lives. He loves that sofa. He, he would come home to me. He wouldn't leave me. He wouldn't leave me. The amount of people that have, have given their time to us, um, helped us, even just messages of goodwill. Yeah. Um, and for us, that's the most important thing that we get to him, Tom's name, Tom's face, any, anything that somebody might have seen, they might have come across, even if they thought it, I'm not sure. Yeah. Tell us, yeah. tell the police. The creator of Wallace and Gromit says he's shocked that two sculptures of his famous dog were vandalised at the weekend. Nick Park was speaking at the opening of a shop as part of the Gromit Unleashed charity venture, which has seen 80 models placed around Bristol. Our reporter Wesley Smith spoke to him at Cribs Causeway this morning. Well, with yet another of the grommets here, this one by Zayn Malik. We're at the new exhibition and shop in the Mall at Cribs Causeway. I'm delighted to say that Nick Park is with me too. Your impressions today? Uh, yeah, just amazing. I mean, just to see... Uh, we've been two years with the charity, uh, with the Grand Appeal, preparing this. And uh, it's just amazing how people are turned out. And they're just so... Obviously, the children's hospital is the important thing. And, and people are just so... That's it's so important to Bristol. Um, What's your reaction to the news that a couple of the statues were vandalised at the weekend? Yeah, it's, it's sad. I mean, I, I don't take it personally myself. Uh, it's more that I feel for the artists that have so generous, generously put, you know, jo Joanna Lumley and, uh, uh, and, and the other artists have put so much into these, uh, these sculptures. Um, and also the charity itself has worked so hard. Uh, but, you know, those are going to be repaired, we hope. And uh, there's another 70 odd grommets around Bristol. And uh, every time I see one, someone's having their picture taken <laughs> with one, wherever they are. Right. So, and what do you think of the, the exhibition here? Um, yeah, it's amazing. I haven't seen it before. It's, it's really quite uh, knocks me out, really. Uh, and the amount of people that have turned up is, is quite overwhelming. Well, Nick, there are many more waiting to see you now. Thank you very much indeed for your Thank time. You. We'll bring you the latest update on uh, the Gromit Trail and much more in ITV News West Country tonight at 6. Yes, more from Wesley Smith reporting there later at six. And this story has had one of the biggest responses we've ever seen on our Facebook page. Thousands of you have been in touch to express your anger and shock. Thanks for all of those comments. And you can see some of them at facebook.com forward slash ITV West Country. Now, the clean-up has started at Worthy Farm in Somerset after the end of the Glastonbury Festival. More than 100,000 people partied in Pilton over the weekend, with the Rolling Stones heading the list of acts performing. Our reporter, Laura Makin Isherwood, was among them. Well, the Glastonbury today is a very different one to the one we stood in even just 12 hours ago, when thousands of people filled the fields outside the pyramid stage, watching Mumford and Sons play out the Sunday night. Now those same thousands are dragging themselves and their belongings back out through the gates and into the real world. Well, this year will, of course, go down in festival history as the year that Michael and Emily Evis managed to secure the Rolling Stones. And they were pretty happy with how it all went. Well, I say this every year, and it's really, really boring, but a bit... Uh, but it is actually true that it really is the best festival that we've ever done. How, how do you top the stones? Oh, do you know, we've still got three headliners for next year, though. So that's pretty good, isn't it? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can it be as good as the stones? No clues yet as to who those headliners will be, but Michael said he's positive that next year will be just as much a sellout success as this one. Yes, we don't doubt that. Laura Macon issued reporting there. Now, let's take a look at the region's weather. Here's Kate. <laughs> 